Welcome back to Let's Play The Messenger. I'm Burning Dogface, and to my surprise, here I am starting another episode on this screen. Because, uh... Last time, the Artificer here... Artificer sent me, uh... To the potential future... That the Blue Robes were founded to prevent. And after seeing it with my own eyes, I can totally understand why someone would go to the trouble of building the, uh, Tower of Time, and, you know, going to all this complicated time travel nonsense in order to make sure it never came to pass. I should notice all these skulls and tentacles before I left, but whatever. You can have the crown. I don't want it anymore. Oh, the portal on this side doesn't work. I guess it's not attached to anything anymore. Here, I'm going to try to take my mind off of the therapy I'm going to need after going to the future by getting this figurine. The Queen of Quills, a fallen messenger of strength unmatched, she sacrificed everything to contain the primal fear. Had you been saving for this one? Ha-ha! Nice. Through the power of music, the scroll shall meet its maker. Interesting. Okay! I got the key of courage from that horrible future. Right before I was chased by this genuinely horrific monster. Uh, let's just not think about it, and let's try to... Well... I haven't the slightest idea of what's going to happen, or if it's even going to be good or bad. I don't even know if I can trust these guys, because this game is so good at uh, messing with your expectations. So... Hold on to your butts. At long last... Oh, no, that's not quite right. <clears throat> At long last, the melody is complete. Okay, what's next? Heck if I know! What? My knowledge is limited to the prophecy, which ends with the gathering of all music notes. Well, someone here has to know. Indeed, brave messenger. It is time for the first of our order to share with you the origins of the curse. Be right back. Were you expecting anyone else? Serious question. Because that's where my mind went immediately. Wait, I thought you were the bowman. This better be important. <clears throat> Behold, the melody is complete! Impossible. Could we finally be nearing the end? I completed the melody. Do you know what to do next? Well, I guess it's only fair. Okay, I officially forgive you for saying my shop didn't look like a shop. What? When we first met, I was really happy to show you the place, and then you said it didn't look like a shop. Have you been bitter all this time? I was just trying to do small talk. Sure, whatever, that's behind us now. Seeing how much progress you made, it's about time I filled you in on what is really going on. Here we go! Eons ago, a civilization of giants lived in the clouds, protecting the world from unknown forces. Centuries went by in harmony until one day they watched helplessly as the world suffered a massive flood. Only a single piece of land remained. Ever adaptive, humanity gathered its survivors and built a huge temple, where they would try to find new meaning. Answering the call of these troubled times, a formidable couple stepped up to be their leaders.
gifted with a beautiful voice and an otherworldly ability to create mesmerizing trinkets, everyone called her Muse. He, ever stoic, fearless, and mysterious, would become known as Phantom. After a decade of relative stability, the skies began flashing red, as if a war was being waged among against the sky giants. Or as if it had taken a lot of damage. <laughs> Indeed, an army of demons, destroyers of worlds, that found the human realm. With humanity's protectors soon to be extinct, Muse and Phantom inspired everyone to prepare for the inevitable onslaught. The demon army was too strong, the temple was lost, and Muse was killed while trying to protect her people. Fighting back tears, Phantom picked up her final creation to keep as memento, a music box. Abandoning the temple to the Demon King, he led the last survivors of his race to the western edge of the island. That final stand proved successful, and after instructing his people to rebuild and stay hidden, Phantom pushed his luck. Blinded by rage, he darted towards the temple in a foolish attempt to take down the Demon King. Insulted by the boldness of this broken being, the Demon King opted for a punishment worse than death. Corrupting his love's memento with demon magic, he turned Phantom's music box into a tether to the human realm. Every 500 years, they would come back to torture humanity, until they abandoned all hope and surrendered to extinction. Phantom was forced to wear a cursed mask which would steal his mind and keep him in a state of perpetual distress. Inserted into the music box, he would play the organ forever to keep the rel relics' music uh, uh, magic alive. In this both mental and physical prison, he would be the one to ensure the curse on his legacy was maintained. But Phantom's will was a strong one, offering lapses of sanity where he could tap into this, his growing understanding of demon magic. The fight to get rid of the curse would last centuries, so his people would need the ability to cooperate across generations. Time travel was the key. With his last stretch of sanity, he wrote a scroll, imbuing it with enough power to attune its carrier to time magic. Before losing his mind completely, he teleported his final hope, the scroll, to his people's hideout. As they soon realized, the scroll let them see strange manifestations, things not every mind could stand. Only a few brave adventurers had a strong enough will to carry the scroll. They called them messengers. With the ability to step through space-time tears, they had access to the Void, a safe haven outside of time.
Messengers from all time periods would soon gather there, the, fer the perfect meeting point for their endless war. But as it turned out, meeting denizens of the future, or even one's alternate self, could be troubling for some. So they hid themselves away in those stupid robes. After a few incidents of more primitive messengers going into shock, they opted to conceal their appearance. I mean, one of those guys was very clearly a cave woman, so... That's probably for the best. Thus the Order of the Blue Robes was founded, and together they built their headquarters, the Tower of Time. Every curse cycle would have its champion, who would join the Order after passing the scroll to the next messenger. With the support of the Blue Robes, after many cycles, the music block, uh, music box was reclaimed from the Forlorn Temple. But then the bridge fell down anyway. Even though the relic was too powerful to be destroyed, a new hope was found that day. Mysterious forces of the world started materializing in the form of magical music notes. After one particularly gifted messenger managed to gather two of them, an idea emerged. An idea crazy enough that it just might work. If they created a melody strong enough to breach the music box's protection spell, maybe a messenger could enter it and rescue Phantom. So there you have it. I'm not sure what you will find inside the music box, but if we have one shot at saving Phantom, this is it. Be on your guard, his mind will have conjured all sorts of traps. Good luck out there. <clears throat> the music box beckons. Are you ready to face your last challenge, messenger? No. Well then, I guess this has come to it. I'm gonna have to start with the underworld. Hmm. Oh, that is heavy. path that leads nowhere good. Well, yes, but is this the path that leads to that, like, isolated section of the, uh... of the underworld? Or is this the path of chaos and nothing else? No. No, it is not. Okay. I think I can get there. I'm concerned about there being two right next to each other, and I was never even able to set foot in the room. How did I normally get here? Oh, that's right, I just fell straight here. Hmm. So I guess I don't have a choice. Up I go. Okay, since I had to be 8-bit the first time I came here, I'm going to assume I've been in that room in 8-bit, and I need to be there in 16-bit, which means that I need to go down here and then come back! Lovely. No! Forgot how that ruin worked. Really?
really glad I thought to save there. No! That wasn't the B button. 1999 time shards in, huh? Okay. Down. No. Oh. Fucking. Th thought maybe. Well, it doesn't matter now because I have full health. Down. Okay. Climb all the way to the top to see if I can get in at all, or... No, I definitely would have taken a look if I could have. Oh, that's not too bad. Just scary. Uh -huh. Fuck! Somehow that worked. Uh... Forgot how much I hated this zone. That's a lie. I could never forget. Oh shit! Mm. And I crushed myself. Piss drink. All right, let's head down for that portal. I don't even remember if I can get back up once I go to that region. Let's just do this and get it over with. No, no, that is not how you do that. I've remembered now. Shit. Because I, rem I remember how it worked. At the very end of that fucking hallway, there was a, uh... A uh, time thing. A time field, so that I could go into 16-bit in order to collect the, uh... The, uh, music note that was down there. God damn it. It proved easier just to climb my ass up here than it was to go backwards against the design of the fucking... Uh, what is it called? The, uh... Underworld. While I'm here, I can't help but notice that it does seem to be a way for me to go down. So, uh, we're gonna try and figure this hot mess out in the next episode of Let's Play the Messenger, when I drop down there, and we, uh, 
figure things out. Later, Burning Dog fans. Wish me luck, because I will definitely be needing it.